do you do you want to say it or anything? No, go ahead. Okay. Fuck you. Hi guys! Today we are going to be making our Beyond Lentil Loaf, our wonderful garlic mashed potatoes, and the yummiest white gravy that you will ever taste. Whoa. <laughs> and, then, and then you know just a little skin action yeah, as well. I mean, because why not? I mean, flashy on the holidays is how we do it around here. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll finish up with some delicious wine again to go with your meal. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a great time. Drinking, eating, all the fun stuff. Yes, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started is the barbecue loaf glaze. In a bowl, whisk together all of the ingredients until well combined. If you'd like, you can pour it into a squeeze bottle or just leave it as is. Now that we got the glaze, we're gonna need some of it to make our meatloaf. So it's about one fourth cup in there to season our meatloaf. Go move this to the side. For the loaf filling, you'll need Beyond Sausage Links. You can remove the casing or choose not to, depending on how good your Beyond Sausage actually is because sometimes it's trash, y'all. You'll see next week. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Using your hands or a standalone kitchen mixer, whichever one you prefer, whip all ingredients until well combined. Scoop out one tablespoon of the loaf, sear it off, and taste it. Adjust the seasoning if needed. Grease your loaf pan using your meatloaf glaze, and then pack that thing tight. You guys wanna try and push and get the meatloaf as deep into the pan as you can to ensure that there are no holes or dents. When you flip it out, you want for it to still be pretty. Baste the top of your lentil loaf, and then once it is basted, bake in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes rest for 10 minutes and then flip over flip out and enjoy <laughs> and that's oh, there we go. Ow. one two three uh. mm. damn it
now we're gonna move on to the roasted garlic mashed potatoes. Using a handheld mixer, a standalone mixer, or a whisk, whichever one you prefer, whip potatoes until smooth, gradually adding each of the remaining ingredients until all are combined. Okay. So, to roast your clove, just gonna put it on the foil. Dab of oil, salt and pepper, fold it up, and roast it in the oven at 375 for 20 minutes. Now for this recipe, what you're going to do is you're going to heat a saucepan to medium heat with the oil. You're going to add the onion and the garlic, saute until the vegetables get tender. Once your vegetables are tender, you're going to gradually add your water, your butter, and just a little bit to get it going. Once all of those things are well combined, you'll add your flour, your hot sauce, your sage, and your salt and pepper. Saute until the flour and the spices are well combined. Then you will pour your stock and your coconut milk. Whisk until everything is well combined and simmer while the gravy is thickening. Pour the gravy into a high power blender and blend until smooth. Adjust seasoning as needed. Return back to the heat and allow for it to thicken naturally. Once your sauce is nappe, which means coating the back of the spoon, your gravy is ready and you can enjoy it with these mashed potatoes, with that lentil loaf, honey. We're about to get into a taste. If you fancy, you could use white pepper, but I ain't got it. Most people ain't got me. <laughs> really yeah, I just want some white pepper. Oh, you did? Yeah. I don't think I know what white like, pepper is. It, it's it just literally just hides, white. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's literally pepper, but it's white. The only purpose for it is like, um, especially in traditional cooking, they'll say like, you know, if you're making like a vegetable, like cream sauce, you don't want the specks oh, of white pepper, so you use white pepper, so to make it yeah. so more uniform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the game. White pepper games. I know. <laughs> All right, and well, so while Jen is plating up this delicious meal, I will go over some fun stuff about this wine I picked out for you. Yeah. Um, so again, I'm trying to make sure I pick out vegan wines, and again, all wine is not made the same. <laughs> some of it does see some time with animal products like sturgeon, the lining of a fish stomach, just to kind of clarify the wine, make sure the appearance is clean and clear, and there's no extra floating particles in there. Um, this one is going to be 100% vegan from Monte Tondo. Really great producer out of the foothills of Suave in Italy. So as you can see, I'm really big into Italian wines. Maybe it's the time I've had with an Italian restaurant group out there, um, mm. but really big into the Italian wine scene, and I really, really love Corvina. Um, so that grape varietal is the main one that you see in the region of Apollocella, where they actually take the grapes and they dry them out before they do the pressing, so then you get this more developed fruit characteristic in the final product. Okay. Now, those tend to be super expensive as you go up in um, style. So you have the Rapasso, then you have the Recioto, and you have the Amarones. You better speak them big words. <laughs> as the process becomes more intensive and there's more passing of the dry grape juice, it becomes more expensive. So a typical bottle is going to be anywhere between like 65 and up. But we don't like that. It's the holidays. You're trying to get bottles that are not that expensive. So if you want to still have the elements of the grape Corvina, 
Just look for um, bottles that are going to be aged in stainless steel and aren't going through the full drying process. So this is the perfect example from this producer. Um, it's completely aged in stainless steel and it doesn't see any of the, the grapes don't see any of that drying process that I refer to for the other styles. For your more traditional Val Policella, um, this is just 100% Corvina. It's just really fresh, very lively, super bright acid. And again, it's a gorgeous color, as you can see here in the glass, like it's this nice ruby, pale ruby it is color. Very pretty. Yeah, super gorgeous color. Aging it in the stainless steel preserves all of that freshness to the to the grape varietal itself. And it gives like dark cocoa and dark berries. It's mm. just Corvina is just a really pretty grape and it has a very, very mature fruit complex that it goes through. So I think it's really good for meatloafs and mashed potatoes. Um, it's a really and barbecue sauces in particular. Okay. Um, so a lot of people do like um, they'll typically when they have like barbecue or anything that's like barbecue elements in the dish, Zinfandel is normally a great one to go to. I um, love me some white zin. <laughs> or yeah, like a good red zin is you typically what people will go for. So like a Zinfandel from California would be your best bet to get something stylistically similar to something made in the Venego region or made in the style of Valpolicella. But this Corvina works just as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be absolutely delicious with this meatloaf. So. I have a question though. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm not as experienced with this wine like you. <laughs> if I were to go to a Harris Teeter, would I be able to find this? So you would probably wouldn't be able to find this producer per se. The producer is more so in your boutique retailer. So okay. definitely check with your local retailers to see. Um, especially here in Charlotte. The Charlotte market has a great selection of wine shops to go to. So definitely keep that in Nova, mind. Right? No, yeah, the Nova and the Sun Street out. Market. Um, just some really great wine shops. Um, but if you and if you go to Harris Teeter and you're looking for something stylistically like this, again, look for something that's either labeled as Corvina or look for something labeled as Val Policella. You get okay. something that's stylistically very close. Okay, I'm going to put bet. that in the description. I don't know how to spell Val Policella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll put all that fun stuff in the bottom there for you. Um, but yeah, no. So definitely just keep your eyes out for either Corvina or Val Policella. Those are the terms that you're looking for. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> So now we get to eat. Yes, we and do. drink. Yes, we do. <laughs> so I gotta make sure I pour Jen a glass here for yes, her. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the awesome thing about this is like all of the background stuff is here. Cause normally, like in cooking shows or like when you're doing something, you don't have like a background of food to show. But it's yeah. like, oh, you could pour that wine and see all mm -hmm. of this behind right. it instead of like. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to be Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, but now I poured you some wine, so there you okay. go. Okay. You can toast really quick. Cheers. It smells really good. Okay, I'm gonna say this about Brianna. He knows how to create or pick out these <laughs> wines that taste like air. Okay, like when you <laughs> swallow it, it has no harsh bite. This is this is so good. Right? You are bomb certified <laughs> why no, okay? This is really good. <laughs> See, because if anyone knows anything about me, especially when it comes to, just in general, if you're picking out wine to take to a dinner or to a social gathering, you don't want to necessarily go for like the big cab or something that's overly tannic or overly assertive okay um you want to try and pick wines that are food driven especially if you know there's gonna be food around so wines with just a bright acidity they're fresh they're vibrant mm -hmm. um those are the kinds of wines you want to kind of steer yourself towards if you're picking out a bottle for a group of people because yes. it's not going to be too harsh for anyone it's going to be fairly easy drinking um and that's kind of the goal especially when you get to thanksgiving christmas easter any kind of like holiday gathering mm -hmm. now i'm ready to cook <laughs> exactly, get you ready to cut. <laughs> I'm ready so to I'm eat. gonna tell you now. You know you gotta give me my wine list for Thanksgiving. I just, <laughs> I just need you to tell me everything. <laughs> just Jennifer, go get it. That's, like, all, that's I all I need. Do. Yes, yep. and I will go get it. This okay. one's gotta be on your list too. It's only twenty four dollars. Say what, well, y'all? Twenty four. Twenty four. <laughs> Drinking above its weight class. <laughs> Disclaimer, we're going to go off a little bit about Beyond Sausage. Um, they have a thing about heating and reheating their meat to the point where as consumers, we receive it and it feels like it's almost been cooked already. I don't know if you guys have refrigerated trucks where you deliver your produce. I'm not trying to go off on you because your product is good. 
but the way you get it to the customer you got to work on that what i will say though is in spite of your dried up meat it still made my meat look bomb mm -hmm. <laughs> it still made that meat look bomb so god is still working yes god is plate. still good but y'all need to worry about who is handling your meat <laughs> like for real i'll show y'all an example next week if we do <laughs> I should have shot an example first. Hashtag know who's handling your meat. Yes. And your <laughs> fake meat. <laughs> They're probably like, why is she going off about this meat? Oh my God. She's going about this meat. Eat, eat that meatloaf. Okay, yeah. Let it bless you okay, real yes. quick. I'm sorry. Let me... I almost ate all of mine already. I'm on halfway through. It's so good. <laughs> you know how Mary J. Blige be dancing? And she did that rock. <laughs> And then she get to She's going. She's defending the universe. Like, come on. This is the universe. <laughs> come on, Mary. Check it out. <laughs> mm. This is really mm -mm. yummy. Make it, guys. Make it. And if you don't want to make it, don't worry. Just visit GreenBeanCreations.com. I got you. We have our holiday special going through right now from November. Ooh, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> from October, fighting back. <laughs> from October 26th. Through November 20th, you guys are able to order our Thanksgiving special. So if you don't want to throw down in the kitchen and cook this meatloaf for yourself, I got you. How will throw you down for you. And I'll give you a little tease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared. It's this I'm wine. It's so shaky. <laughs> right on this part. <laughs> we had too much wine while we were cooking this food. It's so good. It happens. It happens. it happens like it happens. Okay, now we gotta stay by, right? We do, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to finish the rest of this, okay? Oh yeah. So we gotta go. Yes, so we, we gotta can go. Eat. Thank y'all so much for watching. We will see you guys again next week. Next week we got a little sweet stuff coming at you, so bring that tooth, the sweet one. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. It's RSN. <laughs>